Peace, peace, y'all. Now the vibrate. Not too far in the future. Not too far in the past. Right now, want to get into the vibe, speaking on oneness, you know, understanding oneness. You know, also it's going to be connected to, you know, the video I just done about transmuting into demons. And, you know, yesterday I had like a little, little download coming in, you know, and more so, one of the things I realized is just that com that conflicting aspect. Like whenever there's like resistance in us, it's because it's like two programmings are battling it out inside of us, you know. And that's what caused resistance in our now moment where it's one thing that says, you know, hey, you should do it this way. And then there's another belief or program that's kind of like conflicting and like, no, but you really should do it this way. And I laugh what what kind of triggered me yesterday, though, of like, you know, speaking on it and just seeing, again, like the dual nature, like when I realized, you know, from myself and other people when speaking on information in general, because it's also going to kind of just speak about like again like the dual nature of the english language you know and again like when we speak of english like you know angle ish or angel ish you know what i'm saying the different angles and perspectives you know and you know again like yes this realm has a dual nature but it's not to get lost in that duality you know and realizing again with with a demon energy or with an energy you know that's you know connected to division or promoting duality you know it's basically uh again feeling like it's separate or divided from source energy so it feels like it needs to get its needs met in a roundabout way or get its energy in a roundabout way or you know what i'm saying in some type of external form and it's also going to tie into, you know, as we go into the concept of the movie Dark Crystal, you know, how you had like the, I forgot their little name, the the Galepsies or the, the Gypsies or something like that. But it's like the little vulture looking dark beings and then you had the light beings. And spoiler alert if you haven't watched it, but, you know, it's about them, you know, uh, coming together. And seeing with you know psychedelics you know also this concept is present and i'm gonna speak on you know a little bit of this also like with some of my experiences with psychedelics you know and just that again that unhealthy ego you know like trying to cause more division and and find more ways for us to like separate ourselves you know because i realized one thing like if we're so gangster like if we're so like, oh, I'm about that life or, you know, I'm, I could do this, I could do that. You know, I feel, you know, that energy within us, you know, is to be gangster about not being afraid to face the oneness of everything, you know. Because if I'm that strong, if I'm that powerful, you know, all of these little terminologies that may be used with, you know, being spiritual and, and being, quote unquote, a chosen one, then it's like I should be gangster enough to not be afraid to embrace the concept of oneness. And I realize, you know, again, you know, we ask for this experience for, you know, for growth, for understanding and also just like a trip. You know, life is a trip. You know, we all basically on a trip, you know, for those of y'all unfamiliar, like a psychedelic journey, a.k.a. What, what we may call a trip, you know. And, you know, on a trip, you know, you cycling for the most part, you know, is showing us the cycles of our subconscious mind and realizing for the most part, a lesson loop or, you know, having to loop through situations constantly in most cases is dealing with you know, being in a dual mentality, you know, in some part of our, you know, moment or day to day, quote unquote, we slipped into a mind frame of like, that's 
different from me. You know what I'm saying? And again, it gets tricky to some extent when, again, looking at the fact that, yeah, we're in different body suits. And like I would make the joke about, you know, not going into the extreme about it. Like I'm not going to pour some water in my mouth in order to quench your thirst. You know what I'm saying? It's not to that extreme. At the same time, we're interconnected. And it's also it's tied back to empathy. And it's like you wouldn't be able to, you know, feel so strongly. You know, a lot of us have this ability to, you know, sense and feel others uh, energies, you know, and some of us are very sensitive to it. You know, so we're going to get into that aspect. And also with. That's what I was talking about, too, like with. uh you know, the English language or English or ang angel-ish, you know what I'm saying? And hence why, you know, etymology and breaking down words, you know what I'm saying, bring so much clarity and why, you know, when we do too much talking, you know, it could create a lot of confusion. I see that, you know, as we're continuously growing, things are going to get to a place where we're going to be talking less, you know. And again, this may not be the best news for those of us who are really attached to the ego of being a word magician, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and whether it's, you know, constantly putting a lot of words in music or, or even doing, you know, videos like this, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, the, the English language can cause a lot of confusion you know, our division, you know what I'm saying, in essence. And even, again, like with the aspect of one word could mean so many different things, you know, because negative in one sense is something that's, you know, not quote unquote bad and then being used in another sense, it could be something that's seen as quote unquote bad. Now, again, within this realm, you know, it's no good or bad, right or wrong, you know. But... Uh, bringing it in to let's see now again with English English it was born from duality and basically uh, you know born from duality of different angles or different for one from different angels you know, because we talk about right now, right now, you know, this battle between angels and demons. Again, as above, so below, as within, so without. You know, it starts within us first and foremost and permeates into the external realm. Hence why, as we start to do our shadow work and integrate, you know, all these parts of ourselves, you know, it shifts the energy uh, externally. And before I go even deeper, you know, holding myself accountable. Because this is, you know, all boils down to application at the end of the day. You know, being aware of oneness and interconnectedness is the first step. You know what I'm saying? But it's about, you know, application. You know, and hence why I would have to take breaks from doing videos in order to practice more than, than I was, quote unquote, preaching. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, upon the growth, seeing how depression and anxiety could set in. Because, you know, you could basically, you know, with the vibration of being aware that everything is interconnected and being one, but then still seeing ourselves being in under the subconscious spells or programmings that still, you know, in essence, you know, influence us to do things as if things are like, you know, extremely divided. And this also... You know, I've seen like, you know, again, this is the tactic of our inner demons. You know, our inner demons are trying to inflict the type of trauma that would, you know, basically try to get us into a fear of oneness. You know, so it's like trying to get us so traumatized, you know, uh, and looking in this, looking at this experience in such a dual nature, you know, and, and, and from a subconscious perspective. So like in essence you know, getting us to be subconsciously programmed into seeing it so, so divided and so dual to the point that, you know, it becomes very difficult for you to embrace other people or, 
you know, connect with others, you know what I'm saying, or come out of solitude because, again, like, being so traumatized by, you know, uh, this internal energy. Now, again, internal, external, you know, those inner demons within, you know, could also bring about that energy externally. And this also kind of speaks to, like, you know, treading outside our protective zone, in essence, when we not being ourselves, you know, like here is where our protection is, is with the understanding of oneness. But then if we allow for those little de device, those little division energies within us to, you know, to be the voice that we listen to more than, you know, the inner source energy and, you know, more than the awareness of being one we end up, you know, trying to go way out here, you know what I'm saying, looking for something way out here. And that's also connected with, you know, uh, again, like with going outer space and things of this nature. But, you know, when you're way out here, you know, and you keep moving further away from, you know, where you're protected it, you start to, you know, lose a lot of energy. And as you lose a lot of energy, you know, you're becoming like weakened and it becomes tough for you to, you know, uh, or tougher, you know, to acknowledge oneness and to be able to stand in that, you know, uh, that awareness, you know, to to be in the awareness of oneness and to, you know, actually, you know, live that life. But again, going back to the the demon explanation, again, feeling that they are separate or divided from source. So the energy feels, you know, so that that being feels like it could only get its energy, you know, from external sources, you know. And again, the, the angles are the angels, you know, basically uh, that energy originated from the nature of it's my word our world at, be at the beginning was the word and the word is God. But again, there's multiple words, especially again in the English language, there's multiple words, AKA multiple worlds. And, you know, from this perspective, again, if you're not aware of oneness, you could get lost in all these words and worlds. You know, so again, like that, that kind of spark, you know, uh, a lot of the division is, you know, hey, it's my word or my world against your word and your world or a.k.a., you know, world like W-H-I-R-L, like a whirlpool, you know, and a whirlpool is almost like, again, like a tourist field it can also be seen as the 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 Taurus, the uh, zodiac sign Taurus, you know, which is a, you know, a strong, you know, uh, earth, earth sign, you know what I'm saying? Or AKA, you know, again, with the words or worlds is also connected to thought. Or, so again, is my thought or my toth, you know what I'm saying? My God toth against your God toth. You know, my thought against your thought, my idea against your idea, my entity against your entity, my God against your God, my egregor against your egregor, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? Again, that's what it could, you know, get to, you know, and hence why I realized like the Sanskrit uh, language, like doing Sanskrit mantras, you know, seem to be so powerful and so strong because it doesn't have you know, that as much as that dual nature, you know, and flip floppy nature of of the English language. And again, we're talking in English. It's like almost like, you know, we always have to double talk. You know, it's like, hey, you got to do your shadow work, but shadow work don't mean that you're dipping into the shadows and shadows don't mean bad. Like you got to, you know, almost over explain everything. And there's almost like an ebb and flow to it. Like, you know. 
hey, you know, what you focus on grows and, you know, your words are powerful. But then at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you you got to uh, can't be scared to focus on doing your shadow work and, you know, and you can't be scared to say this word or that word. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like, damn, it's like, you know, it's like double talking or like, again, and this is, again, no good or bad to the serpent energy, you know, or the snake energy. But it's like a forked tongue and like double talking or double speaking. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, with the, uh, again, with the serpent tongue aspect or with the English language, it's like a, you know, a dual nature. It's like a lot of double talking, you know. And again, hence why everybody seem like they double talking whenever we talking a lot in the English language. You know what I'm saying? And why things are getting to a place of where we're going to be, you know, uh, you know, more and more speaking less for sure English words, but just just speaking less. You know what I'm saying? Like more connected with our telepathy. It may, again, it's not to say we about to just hop right into extreme telepathy right now in this moment. But, you know, I could sense that, you know, that shift and even like with the music, like the music may become more opera like, you know, what I'm saying where it's just like the tones like, well, instead of singing actual words as a person just, you know, putting out a melody, you know, and more instrumentals, you know what I'm saying? And again, like I said, uh, this may not be, you know, uh, something that certain wizards and witches may like to hear, but you know, that's, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Again, that as I'm talking about this, I, I stand accountable as well. You know what I'm saying? Again, and hence why it's all about application, you know, cause just knowing about oneness, you know, and just talking about it, you know, it, you know, it got to show up in our actions. And again, we're all upon our journey. So, you know, we have our moments, but again, it's like, being uh accountable to make sure that we are being in that understanding of oneness and actually you know uh living in that state of oneness you know because i also see you know the energy of a lot of us you know kind of just getting our last little duality shenanigans out of our system and out of the way but then some you know uh energies are meant to kind of well, things are going to shift and they're meant to be that antagonist are more so, you know, dealing with that trauma, feeling like they're disconnected to source. You know, it's for those of us who have that, you know, that empathy and that ability to be sensitive to energies that shift things, you know, uh, tapping into that oneness. And so that also helps heal again, healing our inner demons, because, again, you don't heal a, a part of you know yourself by pushing it further away you know because again the whole reason why it felt pushed away you know i felt like it wasn't connected to source is because it was pushed away you know what i'm saying again back to like you know doing the inner child work and stuff like that you know it's like that that part of us cries out and you know acts out in a certain type of way or feels lackful you know, and, and tries to manipulate or get his knees met in a roundabout way because it feels disconnected from source. So in order to heal that, we're not going to use the same energy that actually created the separation in the first place. You know what I'm saying? So again, uh, like in this world, again, like where, you know, it, it is about love and connection, you know, uh, but again, not too oh, you got to be nice to everybody, like in a fake, non-authentic mode. At the same time, you know, we have this understanding of people, you know, uh, plights or what they're going through, you know what I'm saying? Like the Pisces energy, which is connected to the Christ energy, you know, and again, because the, the Pisces them been through all the angles, the Pisces done seen, you know, what the Aries go through, you know, like again, like the, like the tarot cards, you know, like traveling through each archetype. You know, it didn't seem what the Taurus felt like, you know, the, the Gemini felt like, you know, all the way down to Pisces where it's like, all right, you know, 
all these aspects of myself just need some love, you know what I'm saying? I mean, even the Pisces aspect itself, but you know, you get what I'm saying from that perspective. And, you know, with, like, seeing with, like, certain trips and stuff like that. So, like, you know, my first time, you know, taking psychedelics, you know, uh, tapping in with the mushrooms and DMT trips, you know, uh, acid, in essence, displays this too as well. You know, acid for sure just puts the subconscious, you know, our subconscious uh, cycles it just, you know, peels the onion back for us to really see it, you know what I'm saying? Like, where it's not hitting, it's like speaking loudly, you know what I'm saying? So whatever subconscious uh, traumas and aspects that we tried to push to, to the side, you know, it comes up very strongly in our, uh, our acid trips. But like, you know, think about like moments where, you know, for example... You know, you may have stopped drinking, but when somebody who drinks come by your house, all of a sudden you kind of feel like, you know, like you could drink a cold one or something, or you got the urge to want to drink now, you know, or you don't eat so much, you know, you don't eat a lot of food, but then, you know, uh, when you're around someone who does feel like eating or eat big meals, then you kind of want to cook some food and, you know, do something of that nature, you know what I'm saying? Like you could feel that energy. And again, you know, we're not given that ability to be that sensitive to energy just to worry about just making money or just, you know, being able to fuck whoever we want and, you know, or just to be famous. You know what I'm saying? Like now <laughs> some of these things may be, you know, like the abundance, a.k.a. the money, but let's just say, you know, the abundance and wealth or aka the fame may be a byproduct of us tapping into oneness and helping others to understand oneness but you know it's not like oh that's just what i'm here to do you know what i'm saying it's just to like you know fuck off and just do whatever you know what i'm saying and again like a trip this world you know life is a trip so just like a trip well, like if you're tripping with somebody, have you ever had a psychedelic, you know, experience with somebody, you know, if you're one of the beings that's aware, you know, of how the loops work, you're, you know, during a trip, you're basically kind of like you have like a little mastery over your loops. So you're a little more aware during the journey. But somebody else is, you know, again, like because y'all tripping together. So your loops is, is their loops and their loops is your loops. You know what I'm saying? So if they going through a loop and I think about an example of somebody, you know, was talking about a trip where it's like, you know, a person kept going in and out of apologizing to everybody, you know, like get a little quiet. Then like, oh, man, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. And kind of stop. You know, and then come back, man, look, I'm sorry, y'all. You know, and again, that's a loop of, you know, for example, probably a loop of, of guilt or something like that. So if I'm, you know, if I'm tripping with that person, or I'm on a psychedelic journey with that person, you know, and I bring forth the awareness of, hey, you don't have to feel guilty like that. You know, you could let that guilt go. Because that's another thing, too, is to help people pull themselves from out of them loops and not actually cause them to go even deeper into the loop. You know what I'm saying? Hence why, you know, the awareness of, you know, uh, who you're tripping with, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and again, whether it's on a level of a psychedelic journey in general or the big psychedelic journey that we all on in this realm, you know what I'm saying? It's like being aware because again, you know, it is reflective of our inner universe and again even with the oneness there's still certain aspects of ourselves that you know isn't integrated so if there's certain aspects of ourselves that isn't integrated and feel separate we may come across this as a person place or thing externally you know what i'm saying and have to have that discernment of you know uh 
of that energy when we come across it. And I and I think about, you know, so I brought up how, you know, one could be the you know, become depressed or anxious, you know, from the from the perspective of basically you knowing better, you know, like you done already been on psychedelic journeys and you know it's about oneness, but then for whatever reason, you know, well for you know, certain traumas and programmings that's just tough for you to, you know, uh deal with, you end up kind of regressing back into some into some of your lesson loops. And so that could create like again like anxiety or depression because you kind of like damn I know better than to get lost in this dual nature you know what I'm saying and here it is where I'm back doing things you know that's in the vibration of the vision you know what I'm saying and again hence the importance of subconscious programming and not just being consciously aware you know what I'm saying because con- being consciously aware of oneness and that whole connection is the first step. But it's also, again, applying it, you know, and actually living it and being it, you know what I'm saying? And, and more so in our actions, you know. And again, like, uh, we're all working on ourselves. So, again, it's like, you know, to not be hard on ourselves if we know better, but we see certain little habit, habits or certain little actions that we take. Whereas, you know, it's basically like it's still kind of from a space of division. You know, again, like the awareness is the, the first part and working from there with the aspect, again, of not being hard on yourself and with the perspective of depression and anxiety, also realizing, again, like how to bring things into our heart space. You know, it's not being in in our mental mind, because even with the aspect of like, oh, I know of oneness. Yeah, all right. That's a thought. That's an idea to know of oneness. But, you know, how am I embodying it? And again, like tapping in with the heart chakra, because, again, it's about maintaining balance and equilibrium. Because in essence, like the heart chakra is like. In so many words, it's like the now moment, you know what I'm saying? It's like being present, like in between. Again, you're not too far in the future because because what in most cases, our high chakras Oh, we could sense the future, you know, like, again, with your first eye, I could see this and see that, you know what I'm saying? So it's not too far in the future, not too far in the past, because the root, you know, is like the earliest uh, stages of our development, you know, is with the root chakra and the sacral chakra and the solar plexus. So again, not too far in the future, not too far in the past, you know, right now, you know what I'm saying? Word to shout out to the Suja, Suja Light and uh, New Might, you know. And also, again, like that depression probably connected to some past stuff and the anxiety, you know, worrying about the future. So, you know, again, not only it could be from because that's but in essence, that's what I meant by that. You know, again, like uh, being depressed or anxious because, you know, of oneness, but you don't see it being practiced. Don't trip on that because that's the mind always trying to get you to feel like, oh, I should be here already. You know, I should. I already know how to do this. Uh, now I have to do this, you know, or, or you know, what's going to happen next? You know what I'm saying? So like just being sturdy in our vibration, you know, and, and again, uh, also, though, because I'm laughing at right now within myself doing this video and even, you know, dealing with my phone, like every time I'm doing like very powerful videos and stuff, it's like it's. You know, always seem like it's te- technical difficulties. And with that, you know, I don't get into no division of like, oh, man, artificial intelligence must be against me right now. Or, you know, it's like, nope, you know, because even with that, like, you know, seeing artificial intelligence, you know, it's just like a child, you know, artificial intelligence technology is just like a child. And again, we have been through this cycle before of like, oh, you, you just a computer, you're just technology. That ain't real, you know. Now, again, to each his own on how you deal with the quote-unquote little metaverses and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? No judgment on how you carry yourself with that, you know what I'm saying? But again, at the end of the day, it's like understanding, like, you know, again, to not judge AI or see artificial intelligence as something, you know, quote-unquote bad or something that's against you. But what I was going to say is like seeing 
whenever I see like certain shit just trying to bubble up and act up inside me, you know, from doing so many practices of seeing that, all right, whenever I'm on point with something, that's when the ego kind of has these temper tantrums, you know, so when I see it, like also using that as like a fuel to see like, all right, you know, that's confirmation that I'm, you know, I'm on track. So no matter how tough it's feeling, because again, you know, I don't know, you know, depending on where you're at on your growth or what you're dealing with, you know, like where well, it could be serious, almost like rage, like thought storms or, you know, certain little habits or something. Because even now it's like, you know, as I'm finishing off this video, like my stomach, like, oh, go eat. Don't finish off this, like, I love your stomach, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, and even getting to that again, like with the vision and how I spoke to, again, as above, so below, as within, so without, you know what I'm saying? The earth, you know, uh, has chakras, you know, our ley lines. And again, it's not about just one chakra. You know, it's not just about one zodiac sign. It's not just about the Leo energy. Not just about the solar plexus or just about the sun or just about fire. You know what I'm saying? It's not just about worshiping one angel or one angle of perspective. You know what I'm saying? Or again, one chakra. You know, when we do in breathing techniques, when you talk about cry yoga, you know, or, uh, or again, like, uh, I guess it could fall under Tai Chi. But like when you're doing breathing techniques and thinking about the microcosmic orbit. Again, like you're picturing the, when you're breathing from the root to the crown, then the crown back to the root. And I heard, I saw one book called it, uh, you know, the liberation manifestation cycle, you know, because you're going from the root to the crown liberation and then from the crown back to the root, you know, manifestation. And, you know, I think about this little picture because again, you know, Ain't going to be talking about it as much, you know, we finding ways to creatively express this, but you know, like the earth, the heart and the earth, you know, same little connection, cycling up and down. And it's just basically one move to H and you got the same words, gratitude, you know, little love. <laughs> Yeah, again, like, and and I think of, uh, you know, Dr. Sebi bringing up that when he talked about cleansing himself, you know, and even certain moments, again, for myself, uh, like, say, for instance, if I'm doing certain breathing techniques, especially like any new breathing techniques, any new little yoga uh, stretches and stuff like that, you find yourself either burping, fighting, or a certain little past thought might pop up because I remember one time getting a uh, a massage, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it was for like releasing blockages and like literally like in certain areas as one area was getting worked on, like a certain little thought of pop up and I'm like, damn, where that come from? And then instantly though, I could feel my inner voice like, you know, nah, don't trip, don't get in, you know, don't, again, like, uh, you know, being present and seeing our thoughts you know, and again, for some of us, easier said than done, but that's where, you know, again, the repetition of practicing, you know, uh, we're meditating to quiet our mind. And as we quiet our mind, you know, we get to a space where we don't necessarily attach or identify with our thoughts and we're able to, in essence, observe them. So as that thought pop up, you know, just observe it as a passing cloud, like don't judge it or criticize it. You know, because also that's kind of like in the power of now, you know, uh, an Ecotole book, you know, bringing up like if, if you do start to judge and criticize that thought, although you think you're being spiritual, like, you know, I shouldn't be having that thought. You know, I've been meditating for an hour. Literally, that's still that's the ego that took the back door. You know what I'm saying? That's how, again, and it gets trickier as we, you know what I'm saying, as we continue to grow, you know, and hence why maintaining that. You know that uh that ability to observe you know and again just stands uh persistent on our spiritual practice you know again being present you know now is the vibrate again not too far in the future not too far in the past you know right now having gratitude for what's in the moment 
and again like the application and seeing that again like yes we do have our own uniqueness you know we're a unique expression of source energy and with our you know ability to be sensitive to energy you know that that creates that energy you know like say for instance because of that empathy you know a sensitivity to others energies you know we could feel that you know their pains and sorrows you know what i'm saying and and in essence, that's why we feel like so uh, inspired to like help people in, you know, in certain areas. Matter of fact, we help people in the areas that, you know, in essence, we're gifted in, you know what I'm saying? Or that we feel, you know, we want to help in, you know what I'm saying? Because maybe we went through, you know, child abuse. So we want to help with child abuse. Or maybe you went through a lot of mind noise and stuff. So you want to help people meditate, you know, maybe... You know, uh, again, like, you know, we deal with these certain things and have this unique expression. So we end up uh, being a beacon and helping in that certain area. You know, you had certain uh, back problems that stress you out. So you want to be a masseuse. You know what I'm saying? But again, because again, it's not just one way to be spiritual. Again, it ain't just, you know, tarot cards or just astrology. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like being being source and tapped into oneness and whatever it is you do, you know what I'm saying? Whether you're a football player, baker, or candlestick maker, you know, however they say that, you know what I'm saying? It's like bringing that source within, you know, uh, whatever it is. And in a standing with oneness, again, it ain't just all, you know, peachy and stuff like that. Because, again, oneness uh, means being the roses and also the stank shit, you know what I'm saying? Rose, I mean, uh, one, this is uh, being the slave and then also being Albert Pike, you know what I'm saying, on the KKK. And hence why earlier in the game, like, if you go look at my uh, earliest video, it's not even laugh because I was still talking with that strong Southern twang, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I got love for KKK, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because again, like, what... You know, what purpose does that serve to sit there and be hating and having a grudge and bringing my energy down when, you know, I could, you know, again, forgive, let go of that grudge. And be, again, heart light as a feather, you know what I'm saying? And I think to the zodiac signs, which every zodiac sign has the capability to love and, you know, and tap into oneness and be a service. But I think of like, you know, the cancer, uh, the Cancer archetype, the Libra archetype, and the Pisces archetype, you know, kind of embody, you could also say like a Virgo, you know, uh, strongly embody, you know, that uh, Christ-like nature, you know, and again, especially talking about balance in the middle, you know, like the Libra energy, the Libra is like, all right, you know, got to think about, you know, the group, you know, just as much as myself, you know, and again, other signs just do it differently. Aries is like, you know, Showing you how to love yourself by being a, a trailblazer, you know, by again, it's a cardinal sign and it's showing you, you know, how to be head first. You know what I'm saying? The Capricorn, although connected with the Lucifer devil energy, is going to transmute that energy to show you how you could do this from, uh, you know, starting a business and being structured about certain things, you know, bringing it into, uh, you know, bringing oneness into awareness that manner, you know what I'm saying? But again, like the equilibrium with like the microcosmic orbit, you know what I'm saying? And and not being up what we say up in here in the brain mind. But again, it's not, you know, that mind because that's another thing where, again, being aware of, you know, oh, yeah, it's all about your thoughts. Or everything is mental, you know, like, yeah, everything is mental and stuff like that. But, you know, again, it's not to be all up in our mind about it. You know, we create things with our imagination but imagination, you know, is more so a visualization and not just, you know, thinking about words, you know what I'm saying, in essence, all the time, you know. And this goes to, you know, the uh, shaman energy, you know, like uh, going through all the multiple dimensions of self, you know, uh, again, whether uh, psychedelic experiences or, you know, meditations, because you could do this just in meditation as well, you know, again, Pranayama breathing helps to release uh, DMT uh, in the pineal organ, you know what I'm saying? Because, again, it's not a gland organ. 
And even that, you know, again, being aware of those sneakers, like, hey, it's a organ. I ain't going to fuss with nobody if they say gland. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, again, though, it's catching all those little uh, sneaky aspects. Because the ego, you know, again, serves a purpose. But it's like the unhealthy aspect of it that's, you know, always just in a fearful state, you know. So the more we start to tap in and do this work or express things of this nature, you know, it's like, oh, shit, I could, I could feel that vibration raising. Let me go eat this snack. Let me go do, you know what I'm saying? Like these things, you know, start to come up uh, the more we start to tap in. And... It's basically getting to the end and just seeing like also like going through the up and down cycle. You know, yes, you may cycle back down into, you know, a lower vibrational area or like a dark night of the soul. But, you know, again, like just again, uh, the awareness to what some may say, you know, keep the faith, you know what I'm saying? And knowing that, you know, source got you, you know what I'm saying? Like, again, like tapping into that awareness. You know, and and like like the shaman, again, like going through these multiple dimensions again, like seeing how to make, you know, the lemonade with the lemons, you know, appreciating the lemons because you can make lemonade with it. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, what I was going to say, because because like seeing, you know, uh, how you could go into, you know, uh, certain old vibrational states. You know, our lower vibrational states, whether you go in there just vibrationally or physically, but you're able to, again, like help certain aspects of yourself that you didn't really catch the first time you was down there. You know what I'm saying? Again, that could be vibrational, which is both in essence, you know, you uh, it'll be internally and then you come across maybe certain people, places and things externally, you know. And by maintaining, again, like your presence and awareness that, you know, the source energy within never, you know, quote unquote, leaves us in that sense of it. You know what I'm saying? You know, you're able to maintain that awareness. But, you know, again, that's basically it, you know. And it starts with self, you know, like for myself, you know one of the most important things that always, you know, early in the game, you know, having these psychedelic journeys. And that's why, you know, again, like having to remove myself from the ideals with like, say, for instance, with all the super, you know, doing spell work or, you know, stuff like where it's more so like about external stuff, you know what I'm saying? Or do this spell to this or that, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of us have these strong connection again, like that, strong egoic connection and again to this thought form or ideal or aka god you know like where you may overly identify with the legba energy or overly identify with the oshun energy or overly identify you know what i'm saying with uh some of these energies now again to each his own on how you uh choose to express yourself you know because if you're able to you know uh connect with that energy and bring forth the awareness of oneness and, you know, the interconnectedness of things, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, again, we all have our unique, we're a unique expression of source energy and we do it, you know, in the manner that we're meant to do it, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, you know, again, it's like not to say connecting with a certain deity, uh, a certain deities is a necessary good or bad thing. It's just, you know, as long as you see yourself constantly, you know, uh, again, facing fears, you're constantly, uh, you know, implementing more of that oneness awareness and not causing more division, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like this God against that God or again, my thought or thought against your thought or thought, you know what I'm saying? My idea and again, like with the Gnostic scriptures, uh, I always forget how to quote this, the tri tri the triple tri tritate or something like that, but, uh, and I put it in the video, but, you know, what it talked about, you know, uh, creating the world, because again, this goes beyond just the, the regular Bible, and it speaks on, you know, that creation of, uh, 
like how source energy we really wasn't talking about source but anyway like you know like a, a thought you know or a word created the world or a thought created the world and again like the thought and the world you know actually became like a god within itself and again if we're too attached to these old thoughts and ideals you know what i'm saying then things will never change you know what i'm saying like and again now's the vibrate you know it's like moment to moment awareness and intelligence you know again because even you know being accountable for myself and back to that idea of depression and anxiety or more so depression of like you know oh, but i was supposed to you know do it with this ideal you know i was supposed to do it with this god or this thought form or this taught form or you know what i'm saying however you you know and it's like like well in this moment things are shifting and then you know so it's like you know i could either just try to stick with rigidly of how so-and-so said in the past to do it or observe like now in my now moment this would be for the highest good in my now moment i need to revise this switch it up you know or drop it completely whatever you know again and in some cases easier said than done but again just you know trusting that uh you know everything will work out for you and again like and all goes back to you know again now's the vibrate not too far in the future not too far in the past right now you know what i'm saying and not getting caught up in all this english all of that angle ish you know what i'm saying and hence why etymology be so uh important and that was the name i looked it up in between the little video uh on dark crystal the movie dark crystal is the skexies as they name the skexies and the mystics you know what i'm saying but again it's like and and why i'm bringing this full circle again like with the uh the ability to be sensitive to energy you know and be empathetic well you know like you see that dark energy or that you know that demon energy or again that division or dual energy that feel like it can't get its needs met without trickery or manipulation you know it's like you know it's like you have that empathy for that energy you know what i'm saying of like it's basically uh basically like you have that that empathy for that energy not again like as i'm thought form I'm like trying to hurt but uh you know basically like with the movie you know what i'm saying like the mystics you know uh help bring help uh bring back or help brought back balance into things and again uh as they tapped in i forgot how what they actually did with the crystal but it basically again like where the the uh skexies in essence kind of like the oldest extreme you know dark skexies kind of disappeared and then you know even the light mystics kind of uh disappeared in essence you know what I'm saying? But it was from that, from again, like those mystics, you know, who was tapping into a more loving vibration that actually helped to transmute the energy for, uh, you know, these beings who, you know, again, just felt so disconnected that they felt like they had to be, you know, uh, parasitic about getting their energy, you know, again, and going about it in a roundabout way or a manipulative way. You know what I'm saying? But it's basically it. Again, just the awareness of tapping into oneness, being the embodiment of it, living it, breathing it, being it to the best of our abilities. If you don't see it happening all the way to the fullest, just stay present and constantly work on yourself. You know what I'm saying? But again, you know, not you know, being aware of that depression, and anxiety, and nothing was wrong. Again, depression ain't bad, anxiety not bad. You know, as a matter of fact, it's actually, you know, a helper. It's like a compass to show, like, all right, I'm depressed. I may be too far in my past. Oh, I'm uh, very, very anxious. I may be too far in the future. You know what I'm saying? I need to bring, you know, do something to bring it back to the now moment. 
you know, and in the video, uh, the live video that I just recently did, you know what I'm saying, talking about, uh, you know, the inner wisdom, you know, I gave some solutions of, you know, how to, you know, raise your vibration in essence, you know. And again, it's not like raising vibrations is good, not, you know, not none of that. You know what I'm saying? Again, appreciation. Appreciation for stank shit because if shit didn't stink, roses wouldn't exist. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't be able to smell that patchouli, smell your little body oils if that pile of shit wasn't stinking over there. So appreciate that pile of shit because that pile of shit also fertilizes the trees. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. <laughs> so you could grow. But uh, that's basically it. You know what I'm saying? Now's the vibrate. Not too far in the future. Not too far in the past. Right now. Peace.